My name is Tony Crisogulu, two-time UFC vet, black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and the head Jiu-Jitsu coach and fight fit coach at Diamond Camp. So once I was on my last UFC fight, uh, I came back to Greece. I ended up moving back, started working with Pavlo, and uh, opening up Diamond Camp. And uh, the Diamond Camp BJJ's boxing fight fit scene here. And uh, while I've been here, I've been keeping a close eye on the MMA scene. I started working with first round management uh, to try to get some of the best guys in Greece an opportunity that, that already don't have a management a shot outside of Greece in the big organizations. Uh, I could see a couple things. Number one, we definitely, definitely aren't in the same place we were in 2011. We, we have definitely jumped up. We have multiple promotions now. Uh, there's champions, there's rankings and weight classes. You know who's the best guy in Greece. It's very easy to find who's the best guy in every division. Uh, there's interesting matchups. Things are definitely getting better. We're more well known publicly than we have been in the past. But you know, there's, def there's always room for improvement, but thank God so far we're really moving forward. As far as fighters, I mean, you could see it in the recent Cage Survivors, the young talent coming up. They're doing stuff that the older guys from the last generation, they didn't know. I remember when I came from the States originally, I would see fights and it seemed like it was a separate boxing match, a separate jiu-jitsu match, a separate wrestling match. Like every part was completely separate from the other part. You would see the fights, it was almost like they were playing each role. And now they all look like MMA fights. Like if you were at the last Cage Survivor, it looked like you were at any promotion in stateside that you could think of. I mean, outside of the big ones, you know, outside of the big three. Uh, all the other promotions, it looked exactly the same. It was great production. The fighters all did great. There was a lot of groundwork, a lot of stand-up. They mix it up. People were using their own techniques. Um, and you can see with the guys how much experience you're getting. Guys like Alexis Havivi, he has fights uh, all over the world at this point. I remember his only two losses at some point were against me and Paul Redmond, which are two UFC veterans, obviously. And now he has a few losses and a bunch of wins all over the world. I mean, he has more fights than me, I think, right now. So just him, he's only 20 years old. The, the opportunities that kid has to go. Uh, we got old veterans coming back now. I mean, they haven't fought in Cage of Ivory yet, but they will soon. Guys like Athenodor and Mikhailidi that, you know, he's Cage Warriors veteran as well. And he, he has a few losses against, he fought loss against Ruzmala recently, but since then has really changed his entire game up. And uh, he's a completely different animal at this point. And he has the experience of like over 30 professional fights. I mean, it's incredible to have these kind of prospects here. And I love, love the fact that there's champions. I think without champions, there's no one you can build up. You need in the, in the scene for someone to say, who's the world champion? Out heavyweight, this guy, this guy's lightweight. You have to know, like, even I pay attention to who's the champion. When my guys fight, I tell them, oh, you guys will be the champion of Cage Survivor in three or four or five wins, you know? It's part of the motivation. Um, but you know, the goal isn't only to be the Cage Survivor champion, obviously, but that's it. That's how you need to start. You see, I see a lot of guys in Greece, man, they, they win a couple fights and they, they think they need, like, uh, they should be in the UFC already. They don't understand what it takes. Like, even when you see guys in the UFC that are 6-0, and all, they're 6-0 and all against, their at least last three fights are against really top talent and organizations that are seen all over the world. Thank God we have promotions that are willing to help us and willing to give us fights, and we don't have to worry running around from country to country, you know? Guys should sit in Greece, build their records, be the best, be the Cage Survivor Champion, be the number one guy in your promotion, and then start moving out. Then start saying, you know, I'm number one in Cage Survivor. I could be everybody in Greece. I'm ready for the guys outside of Greece. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to try to get to Russia. I'm ready to try to get to UFC. I'm ready for Cage Warriors. I'm ready, I'm ready, so on and so forth, you know? Uh, and what I've seen in Greece, it hasn't, that hasn't happened yet, but I mean, it's glad we have things like Cage Survivor. We got, we got young kids now that are, are starting to listen. And uh, from my gym, uh, there's many academies that are doing it now that are doing great. 
And uh, hopefully we can just keep popping out new stars like this. I think in the next five years, uh, K Survivor is probably going to be on TV at some point here in Greece. It's going to get the recognition I think it deserves as a show. And um, I hope I can help bring whoever, whoever is close, to get their shot in the UFC with any connections I've made over the years or their shot in belt or whoever I can help. Thanks to first round management. I hope I can get some guys that deserve a, sh a shot there. And uh, with promotions like Cage Survivor, that's our opportunity. I, I also got a couple of really talented guys that I'm, I'm looking forward to. As you saw Nico Hadisaba, he just fought recently. Uh, he beat uh, Hamidis, who's a big name kickboxer. And uh, before that, he beat a very game opponent uh, from Dimitri's gym, uh, in Cage Survivor. And uh, Nico Hadisaba, he has a bright, bright future. I think with another five wins, maybe a year, year and a half, we'll be really ready to go outside and uh, test ourselves against the bigger, stronger names. Um, I'm really excited about him. Also, Chris Kelizan, uh, he's a heavyweight. He's under first round management. He's my, my, the first guy I brought in in Greece because I saw the potential in the heavyweight division generally is always needing more talent. And uh, we have Chris Kelizan signed and I really believe in the next year, year and a half, he'll be in the UFC octagon and uh, I think he'll do great with his grappling pedigree. Um, last but not least, uh, we have Athenodor Mikhailidi, who is uh, obviously one of the top names in Greece. He's fighting Alexis Savidis very soon uh, in a big grudge match. They both uh, had a bit of heated words, and, and these are that's a battle of two prospects, right? Mikhailidi is a veteran, but he's also a prospect because he's up and coming. And we're really about to get to who's the best guy in Greece 6'6 six, six kilos and it's exciting for me even as a fan not even as a coach because I was the best guy at 6'6 six, six kilos and now there's going to be somebody else taking my spot and I'm really excited to see who it is. Uh, I like Savitri Salai, he's a great kid and his, me and his coach Yadlos have a great relationship but you know I'm obviously preparing my guy 100% to get the win and I really believe that I know that was the next big thing here in Greece and you guys are going to see it. I got to give a shout out to my guy Billy Nord from Fighters Dome, he's uh, he's really one of the one of the most underrated guys in Greece. I think he's ranked number four, but he's overlooked quite a bit. And I think he's gonna be the next one in line for a title shot at 77 kilos. Uh, watch out for the bad Nord, as always. He he likes to surprise people and ruin their nights. So.